What I'm coming on to now is social fields, the fields of organization of social groups. And the easiest way to think of social fields is through flocks of birds. There we see a flock of starlings over Brighton West Pier in England. And starlings fly in these flocks which rapidly change direction. They're the most spectacular things. Most of you have probably watched uh, flocks of birds doing this sort of thing. This has been a puzzle for scientists for a long time because the way these fields work is that the individual animals move and change direction much too quickly for it to be explained just in terms of looking at their neighbors, seeing what they're doing and um, responding to their neighbors just by watching them. It happens too quickly for them to do that. And the best computer models of flock behavior nowadays are based on magnetic field models treating the whole flock as a field which works back on the individual members within it and their position and their movement depends on the dynamics of the field. Now the same applies to schools of fish which again swim together, they can move rapidly and change direction without bumping into each other. So not only do they know um, where their neighbours are but they know where their neighbours are going to go as otherwise every time they change direction rapidly they'd all bump into each other and they simply don't. They don't do it by just watching their neighbors, not just a matter of feeling pressure waves from their neighbors. That's been shown in experiments. So I think these, all these things to do with groups of animals are field phenomena. And the fields that govern them, I suggest, are another kind of morphic field which organize the group. Now, I think this applies to all groups of animals, including human families, you know, social groups in the human realm, football teams, for example. It applies to wild animals uh, which are social. It applies to social insects like termites and ants. Uh, the coordination of the colony uh, of these insects with very small brains isn't in the brain, it's in the field that organizes the individual insects. There's already evidence that wolves in the wild are telepathic with each other over great distances. There's an analogy to this in quantum theory. Quantum non-locality is the phenomenon whereby particles that have been part of the same system when they move apart remain connected at a distance so that a change in one affects the other um, at a distance. This is sometimes called entanglement. And this provides a strong analogy for telepathy between separated members of social groups. They're together, they feel part of, they're part of the same system, when they move apart, a change in one is correlated with a change in another. The fields of social groups, as morphic fields, have a kind of built-in memory. And this is true of human fields as well. In human families, the family has a kind of field, and the field of the family has patterns and habits within it. And this is something which is most graphically illustrated in a form of psychotherapy called systemic family constellations. This work, pioneered by a German psychologist, Bert Hellinger, treats the family as a field. Say you're working on your family. You might be working on your family of origin, i.e. your parents, brothers and sisters. You pick people from the group to represent your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, and so on. Then you place them in relation to each other. If your parents were very close, you'd put them close together. If a member of the family was very distant and disconnected, you'd put them further away, sort of facing away from the family. People arrange the family in a way that seems to represent that family group. It effectively creates a kind of field of the family, and people who are standing in for members of the family often feel emotions that are appropriate to the person in that position in the family field. They sort of tap into the field. What Hellinger has shown and what many other people working in this, with this kind of work have shown is that very often 
patterns in family fields where, say, a member of the family becomes suicidal or wants to go away from the family or is very disconnected often reflects a way in which in a past generation a member of the family was excluded from the group, either because they committed a crime or they were the black sheep or they'd committed suicide or something. It sets up an imbalance in the field which moves through generations unconsciously. People are often un unaware of this. And by going back to the generation where the person was excluded, including them again, by having someone to represent them, bringing them back in a group, it has a healing effect on the whole fam family field. It's a remarkable form of therapy. So I mention that because um, it's a way in which morphic fields actually directly interface with a particular form of psychotherapy and provide a kind of explanation for some of these remarkable effects that this uh, therapy can produce. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, Barbara Morgan, for being here. Um, big thanks to our El Mokano yes. for allowing. Yes. You are not for the first time in Romania. I think yeah. you are coming from at least 2009-2010, yeah. giving uh, training in family constellation. Mm -hmm. You are um, also uh, the founder and the director of a beautiful and u unique journal, The Knowing Field, uh, the International Journal of Family Constellation. And uh, we have here on uh, the cover uh, what we, maybe we start with this, with mm -hmm. this picture, Barbara? Mm -hmm. uh, let me first of all say that the Knowing Field was founded as the Systemic Solutions Bulletin by Jutta Ten Herkel, who you know, and Barbara Stones. And in 2004, I took over uh, as editor and I changed the name to the Knowing Field, mm -hmm. which I got from Albrecht Marr, who's been working with Constellations for many, many years. Um, and I doubled the size and started to bring it out twice a year. And twice a year? Yeah, so it Quite comes out work. twice a year. Yeah, it's a lot of work, um, mm. most of it voluntary, and I have a good team. Uh, but I love it. I love it because it exposes me to the field and I get to hear a whole load of different mm -hmm. contributions from many people. Yes, and here uh, uh, this is we Bert Hellinger. Uh, yeah. And the cover with uh, Bert Hellinger. Yeah. I can't remember what the anniversary was. It was an anniversary, and that was why he was on that particular okay, <laughs> cover. So, well, how come that the, the field unified, the field choose you <laughs> and pick you up from the Gestalt? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are a Gestalt psychotherapist. Yeah. Uh, it was very strange. I don't normally go to something just reading a leaflet. Um, mm -hmm. and usually I go by word of mouth or somebody recommends something to me, but I was just completing my Gestalt training and I just saw a flyer on the table and it wasn't a particularly colourful flyer or anything. And I picked it up and I started to read it and it said something in there about illness and that's the word that stood out for me. Um, because my mother was paralysed with polio when I was three years old um, and I had always spent my whole life trying to save her, wondering why she was paralysed, not understanding. Um, and so I just saw that word and I thought I have to, I have to go to this workshop. I'd never heard of Bert Hellinger. <laughs> so that was the first time he came to England, that was in 1996. And it was an audience of about two or three hundred people. And I was in the second row. Second row. And uh, there were a few people on the stage. And I thought to myself, oh, maybe I'm going to be a bit bored. Uh, three days watching some kind of theatre on the stage. That Lots was of how people I think uh, uh, like this when, yeah. uh, when c coming to a family constellation yeah. workshop. Yeah. But I was very, well, we could call it luck or we could call it the field. I was chosen for the second constellation to be a representative. Uh, and I went up onto the stage and I felt all kinds of things in my body. And I was gripped from that moment. I thought, this is extraordinary. I don't know this person. I don't know anything about them. And I'm standing here in their family field and I'm feeling things. 
you experience the field, yeah. you, you, the critical voice on you, your head does not uh, make some, some hypothesis like, okay, I'm on the stage, I'm a histrionic person, I like to be there, I, li I try to dramatize the thing. Hmm? That does happen sometimes. And, but what I do when I'm running workshops or trainings is I spend quite a bit of time helping people to come out of their thinking selves and no down into their selves. bodies. Okay. And I sometimes do a visualization, uh, like I've got in the back of my book, a lot of visualizations, because that taps into that other part of the brain. So we're much more in touch with our intuitive selves and our soul. And the soul for me is Okay, the your embodiment. book, we have your book in mm -hmm. English and in Romanian, yeah. coming back home, coming yeah. home, coming home, yeah. home, yeah. coming home, yeah. we are lost, we need to come yeah. home, yeah, yeah, so you were, it was, we, you were with Beth Hellinger, yeah, mm. and you come to the stage, something strange uh, in your body, in mm. your mind, in emotions, it's incredible, it just opened up something new for me, and I just thought I have to do, I have to, do this work, I felt compelled. So uh, Hunter Beaumont, who had helped to get Bert Hellinger to England, he was uh, part of the field at the time and he was running five-day workshops. So I went to my first five-day workshop with him in the April, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And of course it was to do with my mother and my relationship with my mother. And how I would describe it, and this is again all in the book, was I adored my mother, really adored her, and I was her carer for many years. Um, Lots of pain and suffering. A lot of pain and suffering. But what I would find is after I'd left home, I would long to see her, and then when I got close, I would pull back. Something wasn't... Something like, like, you, like yeah. this. Yes, and I call that an entanglement now that I know that's what it was. Um, and so the, the process of the family constellation was a very simple one, actually. It was mm -hmm. about me returning to my mother. Uh, and after that, the next time I saw her, I felt so different. I feel quite emotional, as I say it. I just climbed up because she was in bed all the time by then. I climbed up on the bed and put my head on her shoulder, as I used to as a child. And it felt like coming home. <laughs> And prior to that, I had always been searching for something. I felt like I had a, a hole that I was trying to fill. And after, I didn't have that hole anymore. <laughs> I still don't have it. It's not that I am wonderfully happy all the time, of course not. But there's something that's settled inside me. And I see that as coming home. And it is it's very in interesting because y we are used to think in psychology that we need a process, a time-space process, and then that the changes cannot occur in minutes because if they occur like this directly, it's a kind of trauma and mm -hmm. we cannot compensate the new amount of energy that uh, uh, puts, uh, are, is put in us. So y the change in family constellation are rapidly comparing yeah. with other kind of process. But what I can't say, of course, is whether the fact that I had done many years of psychotherapy prior to that prepared mm -hmm. me for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can never know that for yeah. sure. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, I don't like to use the terms cause and effect that it's much more that that's where I was, where the field was, and there was some readiness in my own soul, and maybe in my mother's soul, for that to happen. Uh, and she died 18 months later, and we had 18 months of bliss, for which I'm really grateful. Then another thing happened, as a sort of side effect of that workshop, which I'm sure is connected, uh, my ex-husband, who I had been divorced for, from for a while, um, discovered he had a half-sister. <laughs> and this half-sister telephoned my mother um, and said, could I speak to Cedric Morgan? My mother said, why? And he, she said, I'm, I'm his half-sister. And she'd had that telephone number for 12 years. But, he but never, she never used it until... She never used it. She couldn't pluck up the courage, but just a short time after that first constellation that I had done, she contacted 
okay. him through me because my, my maiden name was unusual. She found the marriage certificate and that was the, the way she made contact. Again, critical uh, main coincidence. Yeah. You, but there are signs. Yeah. Uh, it, so th there are so subtle ways of, of uh, looking in the universe and reality. Mm. I could give you a whole stream of examples. Uh, Please, so a, many, so many. A, a yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was running a workshop for a woman who'd given a child away for adoption at the age of 16. It was very emotional, very emotional. I just set up someone for her and someone for the child, and many, many tears, and the child was utterly distraught. And a very short time after that workshop, this child contacted her <laughs> and she'd not heard from him and she was 40 something years. The second time when uh, a, th a third one yeah. with no, uh, no direct uh, contact with the process of family constellation yeah. react. Yeah. yeah. So it's a standard. Another, yeah. you have another? Yeah, a series, I have plenty. <laughs> so there was a man who came to a workshop um, very distressed because his father was about to undergo a sex change operation and we'd set up his constellation but the energy went down his mother's side <laughs> rather than his father's side and he was really angry and I said I can't push the field the field goes where it goes towards the mother yeah, yeah. it's all down the mother's side of her family uh, but when he got home that evening his father changed his mind. Wow. So yeah, it's, I've just had too many of those examples, people becoming pregnant when they've not been able to conceive for a long time. I had a couple who came who both did their constellations and then I brought the wife alongside the, the man and she sobbed because she said it was the first time she felt him fully as a man. And they conceived a child. She says it was actually that night. <laughs> when he fully feel herself as a man. Yeah, yeah. And he had a tragic history. So the male line was broken. Uh, and this is sadly quite common because of war. I think probably that's the main factor that's influenced it. So Barbara, we're living in, in a, a big field yeah. of energy. Yeah. And uh, we are in we, the field is controlling, in a way, our destinies. Mm -hmm. we, it's like an electromagnetic field. Yeah. We cannot control. No. We think we can. <laughs> we think we can. I mean, I think there's some, it's like a co-creation. There may be some small choices that we can make, but I think our bigger destiny is already laid out for us. And, oh. you, you know, in terms of psychotherapy, we can we work through our relationship with our parents and that sort of thing and sometimes we reject them and I, th I don't argue with that, that's fine, you know, it's all part of the process but of course in the end there are our parents and they gave us life and if we argue with that we're swimming upstream and if we think that we can have our own children and do it differently to our parents we can't. Yes, the same. It's humbling. It's very humbling. What about free will then? If we are um, just actors of this field, mm, I'm not sure about free will. I don't know actually whether we have free will. It's the same as the process of dying. I watched both. Of my, well, I didn't actually see my father die. I watched my mother dying, and what I saw was. There was a moment when I said to her, we're fine, Mum, you can go now. And she took a breath and she went. Was that her choice, her free will? I don't know. <laughs> or was that predestined? You know, I just have a question around it. I, I don't have a definitive answer about that. It is interesting, Ellen Watts said that, in fact, uh, we have not, not, no free will, that if right. I choose to move my hand, okay, I can say I control my, my hand, mm -hmm. but I cannot choose to choose to move my hand. Right. Yeah. 
So this means that uh, my ego takes on its part, his part, the ego, all the actions that the field yeah. are, are in fact organizing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I speak those words, it's the effect of the field, but I consider that it's my smart brain. Yes. <laughs> yeah, talking. it is very humbling. I mean, I think humility is one of the biggest things that I've gained from this work. That actually, the universe is so much bigger than I am. And I, I can I'm feel in your channel. presence this, Barbara. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and and I'm not doing the work. The work's doing me. And I me. try to convey that to people. You know, is in the group in a workshop. I just say to them, if you're too eager, if your mind is eager, you overstep your soul. If you just sit quietly with your soul, with your body, something will come through, something will emerge, and you know, okay, now it's my time to work, and you follow it. So I've had examples of people trying to step over that. A woman who tried three times to come to a workshop <laughs> First yes. time, her mother got ill the day before. Second time, she got a tummy upset. And the third time, she made it. But the process was very painful, so she needed to be ready. The field allowed us to be there when we can leave the moment. Yes, you know. yeah. What about diseases such as you know, cancer? Or yeah, well, there are lots of what I call pointers with things like cancer. Again, there's no absolute. We cannot say this is caused by this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't dare. I mean, no I'm, linear. Uh, the no uh, linear co cause no. and effect. But what I have seen on many occasions with cancer, particularly with women with cancer Breast of their cancer. female organs, is they have a difficult relationship with their mother. So it's as if that cancer is like a, something's eating away at them and they're not able to reach out to their mother and love her. And I saw Bert Hellinger, the founder, work twice with women who had lots of illnesses. And the first woman had 11 illnesses. And when they were set up, they formed a circle around the woman. Uh, and she later discovered that, I think it was either her grandmother or her great-grandmother had given away 11 children. So these illnesses were all representing excluded people from the system. Wow. Maybe is now the moment to, to make a little bit clear what's mean working a, a constellation. Now ask my colleague to put please the, the, the short movie in order to, to comment. It, it maybe is not uh, by random that I, I choose Okay. A, a mother, a mother-daughter. Right. So, please, can you comment? Unfortunately, sure. it's very, very rapidly. So, the mother-daughter. Mm -hmm. They are distanced. They are now coming yeah. together. Does it follow the movement? Yes. This is the energetic pull. And then the third pole position. Yeah. So. Bert refers to this as an interrupted movement. Mm -hmm. And if we are not able to come fully to our mothers, then that's how we are in life. We can't come fully mm -hmm. into life. Those are the re 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 relative has in the back? Yes, these will be probably the grandmother. I don't know who that would be behind mm -hmm. her. But you see how the female line mm -hmm helps the mother then to be there for the child. So the beauty of this work for me is it's not about right and wrong. Yeah. So this mother did the best she could to be there for her child. So uh, uh, child, mother, grandmother, grandmother yeah, and so on. that's usually how we set it up. So then the female energy comes down the line from great grandmother to grandmother to yes. mother to child. And, and we, we often forget that we have a whole line, lineage in, in our yeah. back. Yeah. And we, we can, we, we are cutting out the energy, yeah. from traumatic events, and yeah. we are, uh, have no life force, we are tired. That's right. We're swimming upstream. So yeah. I like the analogy yes. of a river. Yes. So if you think of the yes. love 
coming down through the generations, like a river goes down to the ocean. And events, traumatic events, exclusions are like the boulders in the river and the water eddies around, it doesn't flow as clearly around the boulder. And some of those boulders are visible, like adoption. We know we've been adopted. You know, or my mother died when I was three or four. We know that, that's a visible boulder. Some of them are hidden, there are secrets. Maybe my father had an affair and had a child and the child was a secret. So that's a hidden boulder. So constellations help us to find those boulders and some we can remove. Some. So that interruption to reaching out to the mother, we can do yes. something about that, but we can't do anything about the fact that we're adopted. Nonetheless, we can put things in order to help us to accept that we're adopted. And that's a very deep spiritual movement. I would describe it in that way. And what I mean by in order is that there is a hierarchy in terms of time not better or worse kind of hierarchy, but weight. So a person who's adopted, her, her or his natural parents take first place because they gave that person life. But they surrender that when they pass them on to adoptive parents. So it's a process of the adoptive parents honouring the natural parents as coming first in the child's soul. And then the, adopt, the natural parents are able to make space for the adoptive parents and be grateful to them for taking care and of the child. It's a beautiful movement. The, the parent the, who adopts the children has some diffic difficulty and some, some um, feelings about losing. Sometimes, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because in, in, inside um, him, himself, the, the parent has not honoured and that's gave right. the first place to the natural yeah. parent of the yeah, child. That's right, yes. And oh. then, of course, the child doesn't feel able to do that either. So some people who are adopted will say, I'm fine, I don't need to search for my natural parents, I'm fine. Yes, yeah. And then, quite often, their children feel they don't have a right to be here. And so that energy that they are denying in themselves in order to survive yeah. is passed on to the children and the children feel it. The child was abandoned. Yes. Yes. That's so right. the child feel that lots of anger towards the parent yeah. who, who exclude him in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And the work is to to accept what? To re include them in your soul. Yeah, to accept they did what they did, and I have every right to be angry. Yes. But if I stay angry, then there is no healing. But if I can accept them as my parents, you gave me life. What bigger gift is there? Even if you abandoned me at the moment I was yes. born, you gave me life. So I am because you were. <laughs> what about there are uh, uh, persons in the family that are very angry and want more, more, more from, I don't know, more from the, the, the family um, possessions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's uh, symptomatic mm -hmm. of feeling some kind of deprivation. Yeah. So if I were working with somebody like that, yeah, I would first of all sit with them and feel into my own body. Like, can I resonate with what they're saying? And it's not just what they're saying, it's how are they in their body? What's happening with their tone of voice? All those kind of behavioral things. I look at the group, what's happening in the group? Are they responding to what this person is bringing? And if it's an issue of, the judgmental word would be greed, mm -hmm. <laughs> then there's somewhere, there's shortage and deprivation. So, Sometimes I could just set up a representative for deprivation and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. But if they have information like famine in Ireland, for instance, that I work quite a lot with Irish people, the famine had a huge effect. So then you would set up representatives for the people who experienced famine, and it may be grandparents or great-grandparents. 
that that deprivation has passed on down. War caused deprivation. You know? People were rationed in terms of their food. Communism, people were rationed you know, what they could and couldn't do and what they could have and couldn't have. Some people were thrown out of their homes. You know? That's why lots of, of people from nowadays consider that to, to be means to have possession and something in yeah. order to cover th this f feelings of, of, of void. Yes, a hunger. Yeah. 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 And it, in a way it's so simple, but it's difficult to do. That if you have your parents inside you and you have your ancestors behind you, you don't actually need anything else. <laughs> If you have them yeah, inside big if. you. Yeah, it's a big if, yeah. But these movements are so profound, that one we saw on the video, it's a To welcome movement. back home yeah. the parents. Yeah, and, yes. and that huge thank you. And one of the things Bert Hellinger says is that a lot of anger towards the parents is a substitute for gratitude. Anger is uh, uh, the cover for a mask yeah, of because bread. this is such a huge gift. It's too difficult to too say much. thank you, too much to say thank you, so we push against it. And that makes sense to me. But of course there are other things, like if the parents are traumatised, something's happened to them, then it's more difficult for them to really be there for their children. They're in a survivor place. So this model of Franz Rupert's, you know, where the soul splits into three, the traumatised child, excuse me, the survivor and the healthy adult. And many people put on their suit of armour in order to survive, so they cannot allow themselves to soften and be tender towards their children or to show grief, or they can't deal with their children. Yes, the soldier, grief. the, yeah, the, art, uh, like the, the prototype of the soldier. Yeah, I will soldier on, we have a saying in England, you know, I will soldier on, means I will muster my forces and I'll get through somehow. But it's swimming upstream. Behind all wars and all conflicts, there is a big pain yes. of exclusion. Yes, yes. I mean, war, this was interested in terms of, I think one of the major contributions Bert Hellinger has made is what he calls conscience. So when he started out with constellation work, and in the early days I used to go and see him in various countries, he talked about the fact that he was a Roman Catholic priest for 20 years, and 16 of those years he was a missionary to the Zulus, so he got to all, know all about ancestry. But one thing he said about religion was that the essence of religion is beautiful and pure. But the essence. we name a religion, we put a boundary around it, and in order to yes. confirm our separateness, and, yeah. we have to have a dogma. And become if, a sect. Yeah, and then you have to subscribe to that dogma in the order in to belong. And the out group. Yeah. yeah, and now, you know, we have all these terrible things happening in the world, which people judge and see as right or wrong, but if you see it in this way, like, I belong to this group, so within this group, my membership of this group is dependent on my subscribing to the dogma of that group, even if that means being a suicide bomber. It's to do with belonging, belonging. because otherwise I am excluded from the group, I will be thrown out. Belonging. So the movement of Nazism, and I think it's not by accident that Constellation where it started in Germany, massive healing needed there was a movement, it wasn't just Hitler. It was a whole group of people ready to move in that way. And now that's beginning to heal, as in Germany they're beginning to own their perpetrator. And in this work you see that victim and perpetrator ultimately are bonded and they're the same. Because we're outside of right and wrong. It's a much bigger force. And war has had a huge effect on men, in particular. Uh, before I ask you a few words about Romania, because you have yes, a sure. paper, yeah. in, uh, allow me to offer you from uh, 
for you publishing house one of Jesmuhin's books uh, called To Be Essence. Uh, I know that uh, you will learn Romanian. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> starting, I'm starting. I'm starting. <laughs> <Kutsin. laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So, um, Romania. Romania, yes. Interesting story this. Uh, several people have told me you must have ancestors in Romania. I haven't discovered as yet. But I got a phone call one day out of the blue uh, from this guy and he said, Hello, my name is Aurel Mokanu. I live in Romania. Would you be willing to come here and offer some training? <laughs> And I, my initial reaction was, oh, where's Romania? I know it's somewhere over in Eastern Europe, but that's as much as I know. <laughs> um, and I said, yes. And I came and ran my first workshop. I loved it. I loved the people. Um, I just loved the energy. It was great. And I've been coming ever since and running trainings here. And I have discovered all kinds of things about Romania. Um, it's a very traumatised country and Aurel himself wrote an article for The Knowing Field uh, which he called Sea of Uncried Tears and I think that came up in one of the workshops uncried I was facilitating. Tears. There's a sea of uncried tears here in Romania. So yeah. If a uh, relative, if you, we compare, uh, Romanian people is more, much more traumatised than other Western uh, pe I uh, European so. people. Yeah, I mean, we have a different kind of trauma in Britain. Mm -hmm. the, definitely the wars have mm -hmm. affected. The male energy is very down, down. Uh, in England. And there's a kind of depression, a low-lying depression in England, mm -hmm. which I think is also about how many years we were perpetrators. Colonialism, building our empire, those kinds of things. Yeah. So it passes down through the generations. So there is a kind of, I would call it a depression. Here, you're much more animated. <laughs> and what I find difficult in the constellations is how much Romanians talk. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a symptom of how much trauma there is here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, communism definitely has a major, has had a major effect on the wars and invasions, all kinds of things. Yes. Yes. Uh, has passed on down through. And then we have this massive thing of the number of abortions here, huge yeah. numbers of abortions. And how I understand abortions is the first thing is that already the relationship with the mother is disrupted somehow. Yeah. If we have a really strong relationship with our mother and we feel our mother with us when we're pregnant, we wouldn't be able to have an abortion, whatever the circumstances. I mean, maybe very extreme ones, but mostly we wouldn't want to get rid of that baby. So there's already some cut-off energy, mm -hmm. some survivor energy that enables us to terminate the life of a child. Now, one important thing about constellation work is to be able to suspend the judgmental part of us. It's either judging another or judging ourselves. This means to be able to observe. Yeah. N just to observe and to face yeah, what's face, happened yeah so if i have aborted a child if i can face that child a representative for that child and say yeah i gave you life and i took that life away from you that's a major that's... movement and it's a very healing movement and i will remember you for a while see in english we have this word remember Member. Member, yeah. Member well, I'll make remember. you a member of the family again, yeah. Because it's an exclusion, an abortion, and that has an effect on the rest, the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I remember them for a while, and then I let them go, but they stay in my heart forever. Barbara, maybe is the moment to to make a, a small piece of work. Certainly, uh, yeah. You you are working also with uh, with Playmobiles. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we, can do, we can do this as an individual demonstration, but I'll talk at the same time as how it would be different if it were in a group. Yeah? Yes, yes. So working individually with you, the important thing is that I am in touch with my own internal feelings, mm. sensations, and I help you to be in touch with yours. Yeah? So we do preparatory work, which I won't go into now, but to help you to be embodied. 
Uh, and then I would ask you, what is it that you long for in your soul? Mm -hmm. So, so about what I want to, to see better, see or to work. Yeah, but if you start with your soul's longing, you start with that soul movement. Yeah. Okay, so supposing I pick my grandfather. Okay. okay, you have a longing to meet him, to feel him? Yes, yes, okay. because I feel that this is, that is the point of a big trauma. Okay, maybe. so you, there are, this is a visible boulder, yeah? There's some mm -hmm. trauma that you know about mm -hmm. in your family. Yes, yes, it is much easier that I know the, the trauma. Well, it, I don't know that it's easier necessarily, because quite often the constellation will reveal it, it reveal. anyway. Yeah. Okay. So this is your mother's father or your father's father? Ma mother's, mother's father. Okay. So what I suggest we do is we set up yourself, yes, your mother, yeah, and your grandfather initially. Just those okay. three people. So I, you I, pick I three representatives. Three, three representative. yeah. uh, there are different colors here. So different colors and different men and uh, men and women. But don't mm. worry about that bit. So okay. with the individual constellation, we're trying to uncover the unconscious reality. So I'm watching every step of what you do and how you put people on the table, Okay. how they are as you so put them down. So in the third, I choose uh, myself. This is uh, a girl, in fact. Yeah, so okay. just trust, trust that unconscious process. I trust, so this is a, um, and I choose because it is white. Yeah. So I put here uh, myself. Mm -hmm. And then I, I feel that th this color, it's important. So I put, this is my grandfather. Mm -hmm. This is my grandfather. And now my mother, I'm trying to, to find the red. This is a red. Again, I choose a, a, a girl. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my mother. My mother. Yes. Okay. So we just sit with that image for a moment. Now if this was a group of people, these people would be tuning into their bodies to see what their experience, what energy comes through them. But given that we're two of us and these are figures, we see. It's, the field is the same, we see what energy comes through us. Yeah. Yes, it is difficult to, to feel now because in television studio, sure. of course. Mm -hmm. um, it is difficult for me to connect with, with my, mm -hmm. my deepest feelings. But I see uh, my grandfather as, as a little girl, abandoned and crying and trying to survive. Yeah. And that doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. He's so lonely, so... Yeah. And so at this point I would bring in two representatives for his parents. Yeah. Two representatives yeah. for his parents. Mm. It's inter interesting, I, I find only girls. Yeah. Now, when I try to, to look at... I'll talk okay. about that in a moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I choose this. So this is the mother of my grandfather. And this is the father of my grandfather. Okay. So I'm going to move much more quickly than I would in a session, yes. here, just because yes. we're on television. So what I would say is I noticed that the mother is turning away from the family. So that's generally a sign that something or someone is pulling her out. Yeah. So there's an exclusion or a trauma yes. here. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that you've set up a child for your f grandfather's father yeah. means something's happened here. There must be a trauma here. And he's a female 
and you are a female, so somewhere the male line has got broken in a major way. The male energy and the yeah. male energy. Yeah, so yes. the male energy is not flowing down through mm -hmm. the line. Mm -hmm. He being abandoned, of course, is a major thing. So mm -hmm. bringing his parents in is a first step. And what I would do again, I'm speeding this up obviously, is bring his parents in front of him. And generally that would be a very emotional, emotional process. Yes. Yeah. And if he's able to find his emotion, open his heart, then he can come round and meet you and your mother. Yes. And your mother's heart would open and probably your heart would open too. And another thing is, in terms of colours, I look for who's the same colour. So here, there here. may be some identification. And the, the, my my mother with uh, the father of the, my mother with her uh, grandfather. Yeah, yeah. So those are pointers. They're they're not absolutes, but they're pointers. And the white. I often would associate with some more incarnation needing to happen to come fully here. And given what you've said about your male line and then down your father's line, there are probably all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. that, that male energy, the male line is broken somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so if there were time, we would set up your father's line as well and see what happens, or maybe there would be things that you know about in, in your father's line. Communism is one of the things I ask about in Romania, or the war, people who've gone away to war, or sometimes refugees. Yeah, they've left a country, Russian refugees, something like that. And uh, if they turn their back on the country, the country is an exclusion. So then you bring in a representative for the country as well. So this is to see if we can bring things back into balance, bringing in excluded people. To represent what was uh, beyond the representation. Yeah, yes. what's missed was exclusion. Yeah. Excluded. Uh, yeah. To conclude this piece of work, thank you for accepting to do this. Thank you. Uh, yeah. um, it is interesting because even in those conditions, um, th that's why um, uh, you cannot do this in television, in, mm. uh, or the real not work. Not effectively. Yes, mm. not effectively. Even though I, uh, I, I choose uh, uh, this female representative, and this is very strange for me, but I try to, to see in myself uh, what, ab what about the balance of male, female, mm -hmm. and the, the male uh, values and the female values and all that, and make, mm -hmm. makes very, makes sense. Right, yeah. We, we have to see, to be witness of our heroic life. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We are here, all of us, all the people that are listening to us and watching us, are the heroes of their own destinies without mm -hmm. knowing. Without knowing, that's right, yeah. And, mm -hmm. it, and this is the thing with constellation work, it's seeing if we can bring to light what's unconscious. Yes. Because it's the hidden that has power. Once we bring it to light and it's shown, then it loses its power, so secrets. If they come to yes. light, they lose their power. I and know. then the effect does not go down through the generations. Yeah. Yeah. So I talked a bit about abortion, that one of the things that can happen with abortion is that the next generation, a child dies or uh, there's a miscarriage. And it's as if the energetic womb is not a safe place. And they are pulled out to follow the aborted child. But once you face the aborted child and say, yes, I did this, you know, without burying your head in guilt, because that's not facing it, you know, with, from a place of strength. And you do a little ritual for yourself and the child is re-included. Then pieces of the en soul. Yeah, the energy is gone you know, and we don't have the same terrible effects for previous subsequent generations. There are some, some words of 
calling back yeah. the peace of our souls That's in right. family constellations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful uh, words. Yeah. I mean, for me, the, the word soul is so key. And interestingly, there's a kind of a, a, a fashion for not using the word soul. I think it's coming back gradually, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the soul for me is, is absolutely key to this work. Uh, and I, if I sit back and I feel into my body, I can feel my soul. And somebody said to me, just today actually, well, what if your parents are dead? How can you reconnect? I said, absolutely I can. I just feel into my soul and I'm connected immediately to my parents. And I can even lie my head on my mother's shoulder still and feel the love, even though she died in 1998, a long time ago. And my father died in 2003. So it is as if they're here. Yes, uh, Armenian actress Juana Pella said that each time she um, wants to, to, to feel a parent, she's kissing her hand. Yeah. yeah. Kissing her hand. Yeah. When we do it in the constellations, yeah, there's a... We'll just change these people for a moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was your mother and father. Mm -hmm. You put your, your head between their shoulders. And this is really lovely for children of divorced parents. You came together and you gave me life. So no matter what happened in me, you're always side by side together. And that's beautiful. In my soul, you're always together. Nobody can take that away from me. Even if you live at opposite ends of the world and you never speak to each other. You came together. It's a fact and you gave me life. All tradition, all spirituality, it's about this. Yeah. All we need in this world to become a remarkable world is that the field allows us yeah. to do a constellation. Yes, absolutely. And that we are prepared, but maybe we are not prepared yet. Yeah. That um, family constellation became a universal method meaning that in kinder kindergarten it's been... Um, yeah. I mean there is masses of the work all over the world. It's, it really is spreading. It's grew it is spreading. very encouraging, very encouraging. But not enough yet. Not enough yet. There's a lot of resistance of course. If people are in survival mode and they've been in survival mode all their life then yeah. you know they're needing to face huge pain. For me there is no going over the top. Like, you can't kind of find a spiritual path and leap over all your difficulties. You have to go through them. <laughs> through them? Yeah, yeah. Through them. And through all the pain and feel it. And then you can come out the other side. Not to a life without pain or difficulty. For me, that's unreal. But to some kind of settling in yourself. Lots of tears yes. are necessary. Many tears. Yes. Rage sometimes. Rage, grief. Those are the guardians of our treasure, yes. our soul, yes. yes. And joy is in the same place, yeah? Once you feel your life force, after you've expressed grief or rage or whatever it is, then you also feel joy. Up we comes don't joy. have to express um, um, hatred towards another person. Yeah. Well, we may need to go through that. <laughs> yes. But there's another, something else, the other side of it. Yeah, for yeah. me, hatred is just congealed rage. I haven't had chance congealed. to express it. Yeah. That's somewhere along the line. And if we're traumatized as parents, then we can't allow our children to express themselves. So mm -hmm. they're also suppressing. Uh, but, you know, this, mo this work allows the movement of that. And it's so beautiful that we don't have to all do the work because it's a field phenomenon other people can be affected without being there. And I, I love that, you know, so we don't require the whole family to come. It just needs one representative who's ready and then others are affected. The river of life. The river of life and the river of love, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
and the fact that we only have, I think, three minutes left from our program. Okay. One minute, one minute. One minute. Wow, right. wow. <laughs> it's gone quickly. So, it's thank gone you, quickly. Barbara Morgan, for, for this hour of, of uh, knowing who we truly are in, in our soul. And please, a few words to our 30 seconds mm. for, for our viewers. Thank you again. I just want to say thank you to my parents, to my mother in particular, because it was her in a way that led me to this work. And thank you to Bert Hellinger and Hunter Bowman and all the other people who, from whom I have learnt and I've become a channel for this work. And for me, I would say to anybody, just take the leap, do the work, and you will be very joyful eventually. You have to go through the pain first. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you very much.